Hi, I'm Dr. Will Gibbs, and welcome to a special edition of Good Medicine here on location at the Bernard Mevs Hospital in Haiti. As a physician, having been on many medical missions to Haiti, I know what an impact it could make on the community. 29 Canadians in an organization called Team Broken Earth have come to Haiti. Here's their story. On any given day at this hospital in Haiti, hundreds of people are in need of urgent medical care, and most cannot afford to pay for it. According to the World Bank, more than half of the country's population lives on less than one U.S. dollar per day. But it's a good day here at Bernard Mevs Hospital, just outside of Port-au-Prince. Team Broken Earth is here. They're a nonprofit group of healthcare professionals from Newfoundland, Canada. Broken Earth sends a rotating team of doctors and nurses for a week at a time, several times a year. This team of 29 is headed by Dr. Andrew Fury. He has been to Haiti more than 10 times. We provide acute care and education for the entire week. Uh, and then the idea is that we hand off to another team, Broken Earth, who then follows in our wake. And so three or four in a row, it provides a continuity of care and uh, it can provide a continuity to education as well. So that's, that's the concept and that's how it's been evolving over time, if you will. And one of the biggest of burdens that's not often talked about right now in developing countries is the burden of trauma. So people who injure themselves, uh, who can't be part of the workplace anymore, if they're not appropriately treated, then they become a real burden uh, and not only to themselves, but to society. This Broken Earth team will spend a week at this hospital one of Haiti's few trauma centers. From the moment they arrived, they went right to work tending to broken bones, massive wounds, infections, and any condition that came through the hospital gates. When I first came here, I looked at every type of video to see what I was going to come to, to do when I came here so I would be prepared and nothing prepared me when I got off that plane and came here to Bernard Neves. I think if I, if, I, if I think back on it now, I probably would have turned around and went home. But then when you get used to being here and you're your second day here and you see so much and you're doing so much good that it's hard not to want to come back and do things. So now when I come, I'm happy for what I can do. I come, I work for the full week and I do as much as I can. And then I go home and they have an impact on you. It's, I can't explain it. I always had, when I said to my family, I'm going for one trip and it's out of my system and now I'm back and I'm back and when you're going to Haiti again is the next question. It's not as if you're going, it's when are you going to Haiti again. But they get a hold of your heart and the people are beautiful people and they're compassionate people and they're, they're so good. Like, you know, everybody is good. You know, deep down everybody is the same. At the, at the end of the day we're all people. So to be able to come and help somebody else out makes such a difference in my life. And I come here as much for me as I do for them. Anyone in need of medical attention was served regardless of their ability to pay. That includes men, women, and children. Here we have a patient with a common condition called hydrocephalus. Uh, the patient is here with a breathing device to help him breathe. He's not here for the hydrocephalus, but he has trouble breathing and he's being evaluated. Every member of Broken Earth used their vacation time, left their families, and their comfortable homes to come to Haiti to volunteer. While in Haiti, their accommodations are humble, to say the least. These are your barracks. This is where you sleep, huh? This is the Four Seasons Port-au-Prince, uh, or the medical residence at Bernard Mev Hospital. And, uh, yep, this is where sleep happens when it happens. Um, so as you can see, the digs are um, a little bit crowded, um, especially for large Canadian surgeons. Everybody is working in conditions that, they're, that are totally different than at home. Um, everybody is asked to do things on the, on the edge of their skill set and everybody rises to the occasion. You don't hear any complaints around here. Uh, everybody deals with what we have to deal with under the circumstances that we have to deal with them and rises to the task. And that's fantastic to be part of that. The people of Haiti are in a pretty desperate uh, situation uh, and need help. Uh, and I think that's, that's the first calling. We're all in a profession where our job is to help people. Um, granted, we do it for a living at home, uh, and we're volunteers down here. For me, it, it puts things into perspective. Where I live in, in Newfoundland, in Canada, uh, we don't, our worries and our concerns are, are not the same, you know. I, it's so easy to get caught up in your own life and, and the stresses of your, of your day to day um, back home, you know. But then when you come down here and you see how resilient 
these people are in the face of such adversity, it really puts it into perspective in terms of, you know, how small my, my problems actually are. And, and I think my life has changed. And I, I, I don't know if I have time to realize it down here. I'm sure it'll, there'll be a period of reflection where I'll go, you know, wow, this is, it's life altering. And the doctors uh, that live here and the team Broken Earth that come here, they're, I mean, they're superheroes. It's incredible. I watch these people walk around here and they're doing it on their own time and with their whole hearts and it's, it's incredible. We'll be back with a lot more Good Medicine on location from Haiti. Stay with us. Coming up after the break, Team Broken Earth gives an elderly woman a life-saving surgery. Welcome back to a special edition of Good Medicine. I'm Dr. Will Gibbs, on location here in Haiti. Team Broken Earth will perform many surgeries. One surgery that is not very popular here in Haiti is the hip replacement. Lania Bejin is considered a very lucky lady. She is a patient at Haiti's General Hospital and one of five chosen by Team Broken Earth to receive surgery that will change her life. The residents assess what they think they're capable of doing within their own hospital. And then we pick people in collaboration with them that, could, that need more specialized care and need the equipment that the visiting teams have brought down. The 70-year-old suffered a hip fracture three months ago after a bad fall. She cannot walk and has been in pain ever since. She's seven years old. She sustained a hip fracture three months ago. She's been suffering for the past three months. There's no way for her to get a hip replacement except for broken earth. This is a life-saving procedure for her because otherwise she would be sitting in a wheelchair never be able to walk because of the severe pain that she has. Dr. Fury is an orthopedic surgeon and has done this type of procedure countless times. This is my bag of tricks. This is what I do. So this is, this is the way that I can help give back. I'm right outside the OR where the patient is about to have a right total hip replacement. Now in the U.S., this would cost upwards of $50,000 or more, but today, she's about to get it done for free. Here's what the surgery entails. First, the surgeon will make an incision in the outer thigh to reach the femur, otherwise known as the thigh bone. The hip is then dislocated when doctors remove the top of the femur from the hip socket and cut part of it off. Surgeons then use a tool to clean and resurface the hip socket so that it is ready for the artificial hip joint. Next, the femur is hollowed out and fitted with a rod and ball that becomes the head of the femur. And finally, the hip is relocated and doctors test it to make sure it works. Surgeons operated for hours and ran into some complications. It went okay. It was, uh, we had a little bit of an issue in, interoperatively, which is not unexpected, of course. Uh, but at the end of the day, she has a total hip replacement, uh, and she'll be able to walk on it in a few weeks and uh, get her back to a, a normal life. Uh, she was quite uh, osteoporotic, and, uh, which means her bones are very soft uh, because of lying around in bed for, for three months. We'll do that. Uh, we'll do it to you. We'll do it to me. And so a uh, 70-year-old lady is no different. And, uh, so a little minor complication, but uh, nothing that we couldn't deal with, and uh, she should have a functional hip prosthesis out of this at the end of the day, which is the ultimate uh, goal for her. And she's comfortable, she's transported back to the general hospital, and uh, ready to do another one today. This particular patient made an impact on me personally. Her sunny disposition, despite her extreme pain, was just amazing. Our lady, Miss Benjamin, is doing very well one day after the operation. She was transferred back to the general hospital. She has done extremely well. She's very happy. Uh, she says that her pain is essentially gone. She just has the pain from the surgery, but the pain that has kept her here for the past three months is completely gone. Soon, Lenya will be walking on her own. She's just one of hundreds of patients Dr. Fury and Team Broken Earth will treat in just seven days. If you include the emergency room and, and of course, the pediatrics and 
a department. Uh, we see in the vicinity of 400 patients in the week that in the week that we're here, including you know surgical patients, outpatients, four to five hundred. It seems to be the regular kind of volume that we see. Regular volume that makes an extraordinary difference in the life of every patient seen. We'll be back with a lot more good medicine on location from Haiti. Stay with us. Coming up after the break, Haiti's amputees find a source of inspiration. When I when I saw I'm walking with people like me, I feel comfortable. I feel like do it, you know, not taking it, do it. Welcome back to this special edition of Good Medicine, on location here in Haiti. I'm Dr. Will Gibbs. The 2010 earthquake has left many Haitians with amputations. The special thing about this hospital is that it has its own prosthetic manufacturing unit. That devastating earthquake killed hundreds of thousands of people in Haiti. Another 4,000 people became amputees as a result of injuries sustained from fallen structures. This caused an immediate health crisis in a country where there is already a lack of basic health care and widespread poverty. Because I knew people were weren't going to necessarily die of their broken tibias or their broken femurs, but they were going to be maimed and not going to be able to function. And uh, that was going to be the, the three and four month post-earthquake things that were going to need to be seen and was going to have to be sustainable. So that's why I wanted to get involved and that's how, that's how I got involved in the first place. Amputations have been the defining injury of the earthquake, creating a generation of amputees. That's why at the Bernard Merz Hospital there is a prosthetics manufacturing unit. I'm here at the prosthetic manufacturing unit of the hospital where they actually make individually for each patient a custom fitted lower extremity prosthetic. Eventually this is going to be somebody's lower extremity. The chief prosthetics maker here is Thomas Iwala. I've been a lecturer for about 10 years and uh, in 2010 we heard about the earthquake in Haiti and everybody was like shocked and really moved by the pictures we were seeing on the television. Mm -hmm. So all eyes were on Haiti, and my eyes were on Haiti as well. So I came into Haiti four months after the earthquake. So I was stationed 30 kilometers away from Port-au-Prince in a place called Leogan. Mm -hmm. uh, that is the place that was mostly affected by the earthquake yeah. because it was nine kilometers from the epicenter of the earthquake. Mm -hmm. So that's how I ended up in Haiti. First of all, we came as uh, first aid workers, mm -hmm. and here I am. I do low extremity as well, below knee and above knee. That's basically what we do. But apart from that, we also do orthosis for people who have, we have seen a lot of people with stroke and so many kids with a cerebral palsy as well. So I make orthosis for them. It's more of the low extremity because of mobility, functional mobility, you can get from point A to B and there you are. The prosthetics manufacturing unit is more than just a place where artificial limbs are made. It is also a place where many of Haiti's amputees find the tools and the strength to get back to their lives. Wilfred Massin now works here as well. He's become Haiti's unofficial amputee ambassador and mentor to many of the patients here. He lost one of his legs in the earthquake. April 3, 2010, the day I got my prosthetic 10 minutes after I got a job to work in, in the hospital. I tell them what I'm going to do because I don't speak English. They told me, the job you're going to do, you, you have to help other patients here. Talk to them, explain them how the life can be, like the inspiration for them. Because uh, all of them here, some of them start to cry, maybe think they're not going to work anymore. Now you're going to wear a short pen, show them what you can do, and then maybe tomorrow they can be like you. They can be going back to the school. They can be in the society. We have very, very good staff members in uh, our prosthetic area. And so we actually have a lot of patients from one of our main guys in that unit walking the streets. And so they see him walking and they're like, where did you get your leg made? Like, how do you walk so well on it? And he says, I made it. Why don't you come, come to our hospital and have it made? And so it's really cool to see. We employ two amputees in our prosthetic lab. And so for, for somebody with that same injury to walk upstairs and see somebody with the same injury dealing with the same thing that they're going through is, is kind of special, it's kind of unique. Wilfred even started Haiti's first all-amputee soccer team. When I saw I'm walking with people like me, I feel comfortable. I feel like do it, you know? Not taking it, do it, just do it. They call you handicapped, but you're not handicapped. That's right. Because 
I remember I went to collect tickets. I played with the student people. They beat me two by one, it's not too bad. They have two legs, I have one leg. Yeah. Wilfred is living proof. You don't need two legs to stand tall. We'll be back with a lot more good medicine on location from Haiti. Stay tuned. Coming up after the break, Haiti's spinal cord patients find hope and healing. She's an 18 year old paraplegic patient. She was injured in an earthquake in 2010. Since that time, she's had a rough time. Welcome back to a special edition of Good Medicine. I'm Dr. Will Gibbs, on location in Haiti. As a physiatrist, I know the devastating effects of a spinal cord injury that can cause paralysis. In Haiti, it's even more devastating. This is Project Stitch. It is an innovative new program at Bernard Merv's Hospital. It teaches spinal cord injury patients the skill of sewing. Broken Earth was the first to fund the program. So Project Stitch is a trade training program for handicapped people in Haiti. We're filling a gap where people, when they leave the hospital, what they can do after that. So we've done the rehab, we've tried to fix their injury, but then what do they do? So we're providing an income and training for everybody so that they can continue their lives at home. Still in its first year, Project Stitch has become a lifeline for handicapped patients. Project Stitch is one of my favorite things here at the hospital. It, uh, it was started with Dr. Joe and myself. We saw a need here in Haiti to create a program to help somebody after a life-changing disability. All of the spinal cord patients at this hospital have some form of paralysis. They are cared for in the spinal cord injury unit run by Dr. Toussaint. I don't know, when I, when I came here the first time, I feel bad for the patient because, you know, not, not everybody like them. I said that they need some, some, someone to take care. So I, I, I accept to it. This is the only hospital in Haiti that treat patient with acute, you know, spinal cord injury. Many of the patients in this part of the hospital are earthquake victims. I'm here on the spinal cord injury unit at Bernard Mev's Hospital. I'm here with my my Louise Jean. She's an 18 year old paraplegic patient. She was injured in the earthquake in 2010. Since that time, she's had a rough time. She is even in Santo Domingo, Dominican Republic, and she's been living at another hospital because she cannot go home. Um, there's no way for her to walk, but she believes with God's help, she is going to walk. Uh, she's got good spirits. She's accepted her diagnosis. In fact, right now, she does hair care for, for folks. She, does, um, she makes jewelry. She sews. The patient is here for a um, decubitus ulcer. Uh, in, so basically, when the patient lays down for too long, they may get an ulcer in the back of, uh, in her back and in her lower back. And um, so they cleaned it out and put a skin graft. So they took skin from another part of her body and put it on. And um, once she's stable, she's going to go back to that hospital where she lives because she cannot go home. Uh, Haiti is not really accessible for wheelchair or handicapped people. So uh, until she can find or until Haiti can be more accessible, she's confined to that hospital. As Team Broken Earth completes their week of work here at Bernard Mev's Hospital, you can see the impact. Lives were saved and lives were changed. But what most members of the team did not expect is that Haiti would have an impact on them. The Haitian people are absolutely beautiful. They're, just, they're uh, some of the nicest, giving, warm people that I've uh, had the pleasure to work with and work around. Uh, their hearts are huge. Their, their sense of family is, is deep and, and you can see that in, in, in their eyes. There's a positivity, you know, and, and I think that that many people in, in, you know, that would be presented with the circumstances of, of such a disaster, it would be easy for a lot of people to just, you know, coil up and, and, and give up, but these people don't do that. It's not in their, it's not in their DNA. They're super resilient and they're positive people and they're stoic and they're proud and inspiring. It's such an accomplishment to see that you can change so someone's world like that. It's such a big boost even for yourself. Even though that's not why you do it, it does give you that, you know, that little boost of doing something good. We've made some lifelong friends here in Haiti and we'll be back all the time. 
what I've seen personally is the progress that has been made in Bernard Mev uh, with their teaching programs uh, and with, uh, with the quality of the care that they're able to deliver. Uh, we're hoping to leave something self-sustaining here eventually uh, and uh, there, there's still a long way to go but there has been very significant and tangible improvement and as long as that happens I'll, I will keep coming back. Haitian people are great, there's a mixture as there is in any country but genuinely like Haitian people they're proud people and um, I like collaborating with them. Some of the best friends I have are Haitian staff in this hospital. I think it's important to remember that Haiti is beautiful and that what you see in the hospital does not represent Haiti. Thanks so much for joining us for the special edition of Good Medicine on Location in Haiti. I'm Dr. Will Gibbs.